Hello, this is my second video blog in relation to the Crystal Space and ARES projects. In the previous video blog you could see how the ARES editor allowed you to make in, uh, worlds in an interactive and physical way. Um, this demo is uh, much, much more technical and here I will explain the underlying game entity system. Basically, this what I have been developing the last few uh, months is a system where you can have uh, millions of entities in the world and they have all they go, they can all have states and you can all interact with them so here you see uh, a big world it's very uh, ugly just uh, programmers art so don't expect fancy graphics here but you can see it's really very big as you you can see in the top of the screen there are about 300,000 objects in this uh, cell so you can walk around for a very very long time in all directions so uh, is there are also many objects for example you can see barrels and doors and tables let me show you something here you see for example money on the ground this is a spawning, I spawning item it means that uh, it will spawn up to five money items and then it stops unless of course you pick up one of the, the items for, for example I picked up two and now there there are two new that come so it keeps track of how many have already spawned so you can interact with these objects if you go look in the inventory you see I had 100 money to start with and now I have 102 okay so let's go to some other objects here you see uh, an example of an entity that is glowing you the entities here in the distance are also this kind of entity but they don't glow because i make sh made sure that only entities that are near the camera are active you can control the radius at which they become active so in a real game you would probably use a much bigger radius but in this game to demonstrate it i made it very small this object if you can see above it's not modified yet it has a counter one and if I, you click on it the counter increases and you can see that it becomes modified so let's now pick this up and here's one, another one of these objects it's still not modified and it is counter one i will also pick it up and i will also pick this one and let's pick this one now go to the inventory and you see there are three that are grouped together and one separate the three that I grouped together are the unmodified ones they can be grouped because they have no state there was nothing special about them but the first one was a special one it has state because I modified it by clicking on it so if I drop this again and look at the ground you can see the counter is still 8 it's the modified version So you, you can also interact with inventories, for example here is a barrel, if you click on that you can see the inventory of that barrel, it contains 15 iron bars, so click on them and they go to my inventory. Now I go, you, you can also see that the, the barrel has been modified, this barrel hasn't been modified yet, so I click on this one, I can put the iron I, I could, got from the other back into this one and it adds up to what's already there. Okay. There are also doors here. This is just the test level, but you can see these doors lead to cells, and there are about twenty-five thousand uh, doors on this uh, level. So every one of them leads to a different cell, and every cell has about four hundred uh, distinct objects in it. So that means that in fact, this entire world that you see here represents about 10 million distinct objects, all of them unique and all of them with state. Of course, uh, they are not all in memory at the same time, that would not be possible. Uh, but keep in mind that I'm not counting the objects that are in inventories. For example, I'm not counting this iron and this gold there. So I'm just counting all the, the real objects that you can see. So if you click on a door, you go to the other cell. And you can see here I picked a cell 
containing only barrels. This is just a test case. In a real game this would probably be uh, an indoor level or something like that where you can walk around and interact with indoor objects. I can go back to the door and return to my main cell and there for example I can pick another door and this one is a very stupid one it just contains lots of money that you can pick up and uh, take from the ground but it's not red, really special let's pick another one so this one for example this just contains a number of objects and they, you can push them around and then they will fall as soon as you start pushing them around you can see they are they get a status moved that means that uh, when you save this game it will also save the position of these objects but they are not modified they have no state so they, there is nothing that you can modify about them that means that the object itself doesn't have to be saved only its position so I go back to the main room so uh, So you see, this is this really represents a very big world, and uh, it's by making clever use of an empty system system that it all can work. Also, when save, when you would save this world, for example, all the things that I've done so far, it results in a save file of only seven thousand bytes. This is very uh, small, given that I interacted with several objects already, and that I'm working in a very big world. So. This is basically the system that's going to be used for the Ares game, where we will also support very big worlds. Of course, they will look a lot nicer than this one. This is only a, de a demonstration level. And uh, in the Ares editor, you will be able to construct these kinds of worlds uh, using the functionality that you saw in.